Welcome back. In the spotlight today, something very special. It's a brand new meter, multimeter, from Unity. This one comes all the way from Asia, courtesy of Jerry from Mr. Tools on AliExpress. Hey, if you guys need anything Unity related, believe you me, he is a great, great source. He ships super fast, never have an issue in terms of the packaging, and just an all-around great guy. So this is one very interesting slash cool multimeter. And let's get started. I'm excited. I'm so excited. So you get this great box and you get this great, 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 great meter. You also get a nice pair of leads and you get the instruction manual and a card that has the different um, lighting variables. Now, one thing that makes this meter quite unique is the fact that it has an LED indicator here at the top which serves multiple functions and we'll get into that shortly. Now this card as you can tell it's uh, um, I believe that's Cantonese um, so the good news is Jerry did send me an English uh, manual and uh, all the finite details are in there. It does ship by default with this um, Chinese manual but fear not, it does come with an English manual as well. Now, one of the really cool things I like about Unity is the fact that they're starting to take the hobbyist seriously. Now, they call this a professional slash hobbyist meter, and, you know, I think that's a good thing. Now, one thing that I do like about Unity, of course, is the fact that they seem to be quite consistent in coming out with new releases. And the UT89 XD is no different. There are two models to this variation. There is the UT89 X and the XD. And we're going to be looking at both of them. Today we're looking at the UT89 XD. What does that D stand for? You got it. Diode. Yes. Diode, my friends. Lots of diodes. All kinds of diodes. So, um, yeah. Very, 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 very unique features. Um, and let's start talking about them. Actually, no, let's first look at the meter itself. This is a very, for me, for my hands, a really perfect size. Um, not too small, not too big. Fits nicely in the palm of your hand. Has a very modern feel to it, very nice um, look to it as well. You've got your probe holders in the back. So if you want to, uh, you know, take this on the job, what have you. There's no worries there. Of course, you can put them in a gazillion different ways, whatever you prefer, um, but you get the general idea. Speaking of the probes, they are branded as the Unities. They have a cat rating of cat 3 1000 volts um, and a 20 amp rating. Have a fairly decent size um, gauge on the wire and there is no actual gauge indicator on the uh, the wires but um yeah they they, they have an, an okay feel to them um, i won't say they they're probably the most fantastic probes ever they are sharp though but you know what they're full size and they've got some meat to them and uh, ergonomically I, I like them they also have a long shroud very long and uh, that's another uh, nice feature as well in terms of uh, protection. Starting off at the 12 o'clock position with the UT89 XD, we're going to start off with something called the NCV. Now this is sort of a gimmick that's on almost all the new multimeters these days, but with the Unity at least, they're trying a little bit harder. They're not just going to give you that audible or visual, but they're actually going to do a um, color-coded indicator as well. And you can see here by the uh, clipboard that they enclose with the meter, um, when you get closer to that uh, higher voltage, the light actually turns red. We'll test that out a little bit later. Moving down the line, we have our volts DC up to 1000 volts. Then we have our volts AC also at 1000 volts. Then we have our current AC and DC. And then we have the frequencies uh, mode. Now, in terms of frequency, 
the 89 XD goes up to a maximum of 10 megahertz. Next is a very cool feature, which I think you guys are really gonna like, and it is something called LED. And, well, it has an output voltage. Are you ready for this? The output voltage is 11.1 volts. 11.1, that's right. Um, that's pretty cool. So, pretty well, any LED you'll ever get your hot little hands on, this meter will be able to tell you if it's any good. Next, we have the transistor uh, tester as well. And once again, a slightly different modification with this meter, the transistor tech tester does also include a light variable. And we'll take a look at that as well. Next, we have our infamous continuity and diode. And wait till you see this diode. It is like awesome. If you are in TV repair or, you know, you do a lot of diagnostic or troubleshooting on, on boards, you're checking all sorts of, uh, you know, um, components. It can be a bit of a pain when you constantly have to stare at your meter back and forth. You know, a little bit of whiplash going on, whip, whip, whiplash. But in the grand tradition of Fluke, this meter will also give you that wonderful audible beep if the forward voltage is any good. And we'll check that out as well later. So very, very cool. You do not see this on many meters. Moving down the line, of course, next is resistance. This goes up to a maximum of 60 mega ohm. And finally, we have capacitance. And the capacitance mode goes up to 100 millifarad. 100 millifarad. So that should suffice for most people's needs. Um, and we're gonna test out if indeed it is capable of 100 millifarad. The other cool thing is there is a visual indicator as well with the capacitance mode and we'll check that out shortly. So all in all, as you can see, this meter is really feature packed. Um, Unity did a lot of a lot of a lot of things on this meter. And you know, I gotta say kudos for doing so much and keeping the price point, you know, um, very, very reasonable. The meter retails for around $45 Canadian. So that's around, oh, about 35, 37, I'd say around $35 US. Um, very, very good bang for the buck. Now, the other thing with the uh, meter is the fact that it has one screw in the back and it is a threaded screw. Yes, that, that that's my fault. I, <laughs> I ran out of AAA, so it takes four AAA batteries and we have a melange of different blends here, but they're all brand new. And uh, so once again, we do have the threaded insert for the one battery and instant fuse access as well. So fuse one and fuse two, the milliamp and the um, amp fuse are both readily accessible. This is the flashlight as well. I'll look at that quickly. Um, but all in all, nice, easy access when it comes time to changing batteries or fuses. So if you look at the front of the body, we have the select slash rel switch. So if you're uh, checking out low resistance, you can rel out the leads as well as it also works in a low capacitance mode. Um, we have a flashlight. By holding down the hold button, we have a uh, high powered flashlight. Take a look at that as well. And this is the off switch for the backlight. And speaking of backlight, if you remember um, the UT195E review, um, it's the same implementation, pretty well the same idea, and we'll take a look at that as well. In fact, we're gonna use the UT195E as a direct comparison when we're looking at today's 89XD. Okay, so let's turn this 89XD on. We get the nice beep, and here we are, sitting in capacitance mode. Kind of looks plain Jane, but um, there's more to it than just your standard capacitance, and you'll see why in a minute. We're gonna use the standard test leads, the unities that it ships with um, for the testing. Okay, so here we go. We are gonna plug in our leads. Once again, a fairly long shroud. Um, 
kind of nice to see. Now watch this light when I plug in the probe. Ta da! Yes. Not only do we have the um, display telling us what our capacitance reading will be, there's also an indicator telling us when the capacitor is actually being discharged and charged. Good job, Unity. You don't see that every day. So we're gonna start in capacitance mode. Do a little things a little differently today. We're gonna bring out a couple of them. Now it has a, um, we're not gonna bother with the 10 millifarad. We're gonna go with the 47 millifarad and the 100,000 uh, microfarad. I'm sorry, uh, 47,000 millifarad and 100, uh, 47 millifarad or 47,000 microfarad. Why do I always screw that up? I don't know. Anyway, start off with the big boy, 47. And we will put the lead in and watch the light as you watch the display. Here we go. Should be seeing something close to around 47 millifarad. So the light is yellow. That means the capacitor is being discharged. We're now in millifarad range and boom, there we are. So we have green, it's a good cap, and it is showing accordingly at around 44 millifarad. Very, very nice. Yeah, you, I, I, you know, maybe it's because I'm a visual kind of a guy, but I think this sort of dual uh, indicating system works really well. No problems there. Let's try the 100 millifarad, 100,000 microfarad capacitor, and uh, see what she's got. So here we are in action. Probe, um, the meter is discharging the capacitor. That is why it is currently yellow. And let's see, is it gonna hit 100,000? There we go, 97.9 millifarad. Green is good. So um, no worries there. Um, yeah, so something different. Probably the only meter I've ever seen, and believe you me, I've seen a lot of meters, that has this sort of uh, visual indicator for the capacitance mode. Very cool, and I like it. Alrighty, so here we are. Three in a row. Got a Fluke 83 on the left. Star of the show in the middle, the UT89XD. And on the far right, the UT195E Pro. We're looking at a voltage test. Going to go up to just over 30 volts DC. And we're starting off at 0.7, as you can see. They're all pretty close. 0.792 for the Fluke. 794 and 791 respectively and here we go taking it up let's hit five volts five volts spot on according to power supply 5.13 for the fluke 5.14 for the 89 and 5.12 for the 195e going up up and away let's hit 12 volts sitting at okay 12.6 volts and now we see this is a non-auto ranging, so we've got to take it up a notch. There we go. 12.69 for the Fluke, 12.73 for the 89, and 12.67 for the 195. You can tell the 195 Pro and the Fluke 83 are pretty well neck and neck. The 89 XT, just a tad higher. Okay, going up. Let's go up to 20, 21 volts even. 21.11 for the Fluke 83, 21.17 for the 89, and 21.09 for the 195. Further, further, further. It's gonna max it out now at 31.3 volts. 31.44 for the Fluke 83, 31.55 for the Unity 89 XD, and 31.42 for the 195 E Pro. As, a, as you can see, both of the Unities have that high voltage indicator that like a lightning bolt, it is flashing on the 195 and it's a steady on the 89 XD. And that is indicative of reaching voltage in excess of 30 volts. There is no such indicator on the Fluke. So yeah, pretty well neck and neck, the 83 and the 195. The 89 XD was a few counts higher, uh, but definitely nothing um, to get worried about um, all in all. Good job. Something else worth pointing out as well is that 
unlike the 195 Pro, there is no bar graph scale on the 89XD. So while we have both the 195 and the 89XD beside each other, I'll do a couple of um, comparative looks. First of all, let's look at the selector switch. Um, fairly, fairly, um, at least look-wise, they do look pretty much the same. They have a nice um, rubberized uh, feel to the actually to the rotary selector. I really like the way they feel. Both of them feel really good. Um, a little more clicky click with the uh, 89. Whereas the 195, you've definitely got to put a little more pressure to turn it. Um, it is very authoritative though in reaching the range. They both have that beeping sound. Every time you turn the selector, you do get an audible beep. And as well, let's take a look at the backlight. They both utilize the same backlight principle. And if we turn backlights on both, you can tell right away that the 89XD is definitely more luminous, definitely brighter. Um, I'd say much better visually uh, than the 195E. Now, if you turn off that backlight, they both have the off switch. You see the backlight is disabled. Now, once you do that, once again, they both have that annoying feature where unfortunately, you cannot re-invoke that backlight no matter how dark it is. You actually have to physically turn off the meter in order to re-enable the backlight. So yeah, that's a little bit problematic. Definitely wish Unity would come up with something a little bit better design-wise than that. But um, well, for now at least, it is what it is. Both meters are true RMS. Um, the transistor tester is only on the 89. And if you want to compare apples to oranges, the 195 retails for around 175 Canadian, about 150 US, whereas the 89 is retailing for about 45 dollars $47 Canadian, around $38, $40 US. In terms of the actual size themselves, um, the 195 definitely is a tad bit uh, thicker and probably about a half inch um, longer as well. And uh, yeah, definitely heavier. I'd say a good, a good bit heavier than the, uh, the 89XD as well. You will remember that indeed the tilting bail, tilting stand, uh, had sort of an annoying um, flippity doodah happening. So uh, yeah, kind of problematic. Didn't really like that. I'm happy to report that the 89XD does not suffer from that problem. In fact, it's in there nice and tight and uh, yeah, no worries there. So uh, good job Unity for getting that resolved. In terms of the standing bail itself, um, no issues there. It's not going anywhere. Nice and solid. Um, yeah, really good job with the stand. Now that being said, you do not have that sort of 45 degree angle. Um, that you do, that you can have with the 195. You can see it definitely goes down quite a bit further. Um, but that being said, I still find the tilting to be quite well done. Next up is resistance, and we are sitting at nine mega ohm, and as you can see, pretty well spot on. Bring it down to eight, no worries there. Bring it down to five mega ohm, pretty well spot on. 1 mega ohm, yeah, no worries there. Now we'll just look at the finite resistance. Let's take a look at a 0.5 resistor. And no worries there. Bring it up to 60 mega ohm, the max. And we'll test out a 22 mega ohm, 5%. Good enough. Next up, we're going to look at the diode testing itself. Um, a diode is basically reverse bias when the positive test lead is on the cathode and the negative is on the anode. So let's try that out. And there we go. So we're getting that green telling us it's good. We're getting the forward voltage drop as well as we're getting that audible beep. And uh, you'd only have to be looking at the meter 
just hearing that beep alone will tell you that this is a good diode. Um, it's a bad diode. Basically, the reading would be the same in, in both directions. So uh, let's just reverse the leads. And you can tell, nothing. Put it back the way it was, and we have that nice comforting beep letting us know that that LED is good as well as that visual indicator. I cannot stress this enough. This is a great, great feature. I don't, honestly don't know why more multimeters don't have it. Um, for me, it's reminiscent of the older flukes. Um, but that being said, good job, Unity. I Okay, now we are in continuity. Yes. We're going to try first with the stock Unity probes. Here we go. Awesome. Hey, no worries there. That is perfect continuity. Now, if I keep the probes together for any length of time, you can tell we actually get the visual indicator as well. It's latched, it's quick, good stuff. Okay, let's try out the probe masters. Perfect, perfect. Maybe oh, a couple of milliseconds faster. Um, not a big difference though from the stock probes. So uh, good job Unity with the continuity. I've had this meter just keeps on surprising and I just love it. I mean, all these new features, it is great. Another big new feature is the LED mode. Okay, you can call it LED, LED, light emitting diode, whatever you want to call it, right? What it does is it puts out a forward voltage of, are you ready for it? That's right, almost 12 volts. And the instruction manual, they're saying 11, but it's actually closer to 12 volts. 12 volts, that's gonna light up a whole lot of LEDs. I love it. Alrighty, so let's test it out. Here we are starting off with the red. Reverse the lead. There we go. Oh, awesome. 1.89. Here we are. 1.9596. 1.99. The white. 2.7. Getting the visual indicator being illuminated as well. And finally the blue. 2.75. And just look how bright that is. Like a Christmas tree. Oh. oh was that as good for you as it was for me? Oh. So cool. I love it. Okay, next I've got the Protec 506. Just take a quick look at the frequency. I'm not gonna get very high in terms of ranges, but we'll just give it a quick get go. Um, as you can see, we are spot on. Uh, going good, eight kilohertz, and there we are. So yeah. By the way, this old Protec 506, cool, cool meter. If you can, uh, find one at a decent price, I say grab it. I might even do a review on this at some point. A very cool multimeter. So yeah, no worries there in terms of frequency. Looking good. And once again, we hit the select button and there is the duty cycle. Booyah. Okay, uh, we have the meter in non-contact voltage detection mode and I have the flashlight on the back of the meter, as you can tell. And yeah, it's pretty darn bright. So this is the junction box, and these are some live wires. Let's test out the NCV. Yep, they're live. Cool. And here we are in AC mode, as you can tell. 120 volts coming in on the household line. Looking good. Also at the top left in the Unity Tradition, you can tell we have that voltage indicator, the little spike that automatically is enabled whenever uh, the meter senses a voltage higher than 30 volts. Okay, we're now in transistor mode. I have a uh, NPN transistor here, and we're gonna just check out, see if the uh, HFE or the gain is any good. Now, it is sitting inside that transistor tester right now. As you can see, there's no reading, so we should get a visual indicator. Uh, the light should go green if it's um, a good transistor. Here we go, just give it a little bit of, there we are. So there's our gain, 158. And as you can tell, this is a good transistor. Okay, it's time to get on the inside of this guy. And we've got one, two, three, four Phillips screws. Okay. 
Okay, so finally, four very long Phillips screws, um, much longer than your typical chassis screw. That's a good thing. Now we're going to try and take it off here. Oh, God. There's two more. Oh. Okay, so without further ado, let us take off the top and come to Papa. There we go. Alrighty, Aphrodite. So here definitely is where you see a difference in terms of the overall input protection as opposed to the 195. Um, if you recall, the 195 had those big ass HRC fuses. Um, quite a difference here. We have the smaller ceramic style fuse. Once again, very accessible. You don't have to take off the entire chassis to get to them. You just take off the one screw and you can easily access the battery or the fuses. Once again, though, they are small fuses. Um, definitely nothing to get overly excited about. If we look at the probe uh, holders themselves, they are of the split variety, but once again, they are into a recessed plastic housing, and the soldering job is definitely 100%, so I really can't see these being problematic at all in the long term. In terms of the actual input protection um, itself, well, we do have on the voltage side one PTC. And yeah, so not a heck of a lot. Um, if we look at the current side of things, we have the full fuse, the uh, small current shunt. And I believe we do have some diode clamping here as well. Yeah, so just to verify on the um, current side of things, we do have the one fuse, the current shunt, and yeah, that's pretty well it in terms of input protection. On the milliamp side of things, we have the fuse, and yeah, and some diode clamping as well. Once again, on the voltage side, all we have is that one lonely PTC. So in comparison, a stark contrast to the 195, definitely not uh, nearly the input protection we saw on that model. Well, they say pictures worth a thousand words, indeed it is. So I thought instead of just rambling on about it, let's just take apart the 195 again and uh, show you guys what it looks like inside in case you forgot or if you haven't seen the video. So yeah, look at the size of those fuses. That's like amazing. Big, big, kick-ass HRC 11 amp on the current side of things compared to the minuscule little ceramic fuse we have here. Once again, the current shunt as well is twice as long. And of course, look at these gorgeous PTCs and mobs that we have as well in terms of the input protection. Big ass resistor over here. And on the milliamp range, once again, a nice big large fuse. Also, if you look at the probe um, holding inserts themselves, unlike the 89XD, the 195 here, they are screwed on, no split, uh, screwed on really well uh, with the nut. Beautiful soldering job, just a plus in terms of overall build quality on that 195. And if you look at the actual real estate, um, the, uh, yeah, the 89 does look quite sparse in contrast, not nearly as much going on um behind the scenes as in the 195. so moving down the pcb here as well these are the uh, battery contacts that uh, power the board itself the uh, ic is actually cobbed i have no idea at this point what is powering what the brains are behind this guy our crystal oscillator here here's the big arse led that's our flashlight and our speaker over here and we have a fabrication date of August 18th, as you can see, August 18th, 2018, super duper new meter. And as you can tell, it is a Rev 1, revision number one. Um, over here, we've got our 555 timer. And um, if we move up the line here, you can just make out here on the edges. That is the um, metal filament for the non-contact voltage detection. So in a nutshell, there you have it. That is the innards of the new 
UT89XD. Coming back, final thoughts on the Unity UT89XD. Hey, this is a great multimeter. It really is. It does a lot of things, and I really applaud Unity for thinking out of the box and trying to do a few things just a little bit differently. Um, feature packed, yes, it's not auto ranging, so that might turn some people off. But if you can get past that, as uh, far as features go, for a true RMS meter, this thing is loaded. Um, I really, really appreciate that audible diode mode. Um, it's just a super duper handy thing to have on the bench. And I think a lot of technicians would really appreciate that. Once again, the LED mode as well, amazing. Over close to 12 volts. How can you go wrong when it comes to checking LEDs? I mean, that's just amazing. It's like, wow. Nice big display, not as big as the 195, but nonetheless, very easy on the eyes. The only caveat is it's that got very interesting um, backlight technology. I still think it's a work in progress. Um, I think they could do better. Uh, hopefully they will. I wish it had a little bit more in terms of the overall input protection, but if you keep it away from any serious voltage, this meter is going to serve you just fine. The Unity UT89XT gets a solid 4 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this review. Lots more coming, and as always, keep on testing.